Hey there, today I'm closing out 2021 with my top five mezcals of the year. These are bottles that I right out purchased, have them on hand in my collection. And the big thing about these five mezcals is why they're so special to me. So anyway, on to the favorites. Last episode, I went through my top three favorite Espadine mezcals for the year. In this one, all mezcals are on the table. And starting off at number five, we have the Malbien Madriquiche Puntas. And those of you out there that don't know what Puntas are, it's the first drinkable part of a distillation and the highest alcohol by volume or ABV. This 200 milliliter bottle is from the Agave Mixtape Mezcal subscription. Let's dig into the details. This Malbien Madriquiche Puntas is made by Mescaleros Felipe and Ajeo Cortez. Madriquiche is an Agave Karwinski. The Palenque is a Mingoli de Morales in Miahuatlan, Oaxaca. It's a Tejona stone grind fermented in Sabina wood, two times distilled in copper alambiques with refrescadera to 57% ABV. With this on the nose, I got aromas of fruit punch, raw cherries, and fine leather. Flavors on the palate, I had two sweet aspects, sort of a, a junior mint note, a brown sugar, uh, there was a sort of a parm cheese saltiness on the back end and nice popcorn in the finish. Marvelous. And I tell you, this stuff goes down way too easy for 57%. I was extra excited to try this for the first time because of the higher proof. Before that, I think the highest I dabbled into was around 51%. Obviously, I tried it, loved it. But the deeper meaning here is this shot me into it the appreciation for the higher proof agave spirits or even puntas. And it happened to be about a few weeks before I went to Oaxaca for the first time. And it gave me sort of the confidence, the desire to talk to mescaleros, mescaleras, and ask for their uh, punta selections, higher proof stuff. And I really enjoyed it. The main reason, the flavors are so much more bold and concentrated. So yeah, this mezcal, big influence for me. Uh, recommend anyone out there try the Agave Mixtape Mezcal subscription. It's three brands, La Locura, Neta, and Malbien. Give it a go. On to number four, and this is another Mezcal subscription I'm part of. This is Maguey Malate. This is the Maguey Malate Tequilana by Victor and Emmanuel Ramos. The Palenque is in Mingoli de Morales. It's a Tejona stone grind fermented in Sabino wood and it's one pass through a copper refrescador to 49% alcohol by volume. And the nose on this is awesome. It's got booming roasted agave aroma, bit floral, and a little bit of black pepper. Flavors on the palate are equally great. We've got some lime, rose water, clay minerality. The smoke is beautiful and it's the perfect heat. So this one here, another very cool part of my mezcal journey. This got me into or gave me a taste for higher quality tequila-esque agave spirits. I had always tried Blancos that had been at around the 40% range in, in tequila, and I just thought they were okay. This tequilana, 49%, bursting with flavor, and it prodded me to try out higher proof tequilas out there, sort of in the 46 to 55% range, and I noticed the exact same effect. So that's why I love this mezcal. It swooped me back into sort of the Blanco tequila realm again, and made me a more balanced agave spirit drinker. Miguel Malate is another fantastic subscription to try out. They're always finding great batches from the greatest people all through Mexico. And coming in at number three is Vago Mexicano by legendary mescalero Aquilino Garcia, who unfortunately passed away in 2020. The first quality mezcal that I ever had was Aquilino's Espadine, and that really drew me into the agave spirit. Then shortly after, I tried his Elote, another great mezcal. And going into 2021, I always wanted to try the Mexicano that he made, but I never thought I'd ever get the chance. But when I was in Oaxaca on a mezcal tour with Alvin Starkman, we had just finished lunch at an awesome barbacoa joint in Matatlan, and he asked if I wanted to try some. I was like, what? Like here, they have it on the menu and Alvin shook his head. He's like, no, no, no. So he gets up, he goes, comes back with a box, a wooden box, opens her up and 
there's these glass bottles in there with probably some of the finest mezcals on the entire planet. So Alvin pulls up one of the bottles. I think it was a batch from 2013. Pours me one, pours him one. You'll salute. I tried it and it was absolutely mind blowing, like better than I could have imagined. And that's when the scarcity sunk in. This was a special mezcal shared in a special place at a special time. But when I got back to California, I looked online and I saw a Vago Mexicano. So I ordered it, but what showed up was a bottle of Vago Mexicano, but the mescaleros were Hios de Aquilino. So this was a newer batch made by his sons, still good mezcal. It just didn't have that connection of me having my very own Vago Aquilino. But lo and behold, a few months later, I was in Dallas, Texas for work, strolled into Pogo's Wine and Spirits to see what mezcals they had on hand, looked down at the shelf, there it was, voila. And here it is, my own Vago Mexicano Aquilino. This Vago Mexicano, again, made by legendary mescalero Aquilino Garcia. It's made with agave rodacantha. The palenque is in Candelaria Yehole. It's stone crushed, copper distilled to 51% ABV. On the nose, I get aromas of powdered sugar, roasted cactus, and a tiny bit of jalapeno pepper heat. Flavors on the palate, vegetal, sort of like green pepper, sweetness like cake frosting, I got ash on the finish and a nice white pepper heat. Magic. I'm going to savor the heck out of this bottle. And in a roundabout way, this is why this made my list as number three of my top mezcals of 2021. All right, time for number two on the countdown. And we have a double Vago. What we got here is the Elote by Hios de Aquilino, Temo and Mateo Garcia. The Vago Elote by Mescaleros Mateo and Temo Garcia uses Agave Angustifolia, also known as Espadine. The Palenque is in Candelaria Yehole. It's a Tejona stone grind, triple distilled in copper. This is a Pachuca style mezcal where roasted corn from their farm is added between the second and third distillation. On the nose for me, I get frozen corn and fresh grapefruit juice. Flavor-wise, this is much sweeter than their father's elote, and there's a bit more texture, little higher viscosity, but the corn notes in this, absolutely amazing. It's like a grilled, buttered, salted, sweet corn on the cob, uh, and then you get a citrus aspect like grapefruit. It's grassy, and the smoke on the finish is basically the whole way through, balanced really well. This stuff is just incredible. Another thing, you can pick this up for under 50 bucks. So why is this mezcal so special to me? Well, the first time I tried it, blew the hat right off my head. I had already had a bottle of the Mexicano by Hios de Aquilino. It was, it, was, it was good, not legendary, but I liked their mezcal enough to give this a go. I think I picked it up for $47. So I opened it up, poured myself one, tipped her back, and was like, what the heck? Again, I really like their father's elote, but this was a definite step above. Another reason I love this mezcal, respect. Temo and Mateo had massive shoes to fill. They stepped up to the plate, cranked it out of the park. All right, here we go. The number one, La Luna Chino Mezcal. I rolled the dice on this for 90 bucks. I wasn't quite sure about it, but absolute game changer. And set me on a path to loving Michoacan mezcals. Taste-wise, this is the most crushable mezcal I've ever had. It's like the whole thing evaporated. La Luna Chino is made by mescalero Patricio Ariega Peña. It's made in Indiparapeo, Michoacan, with agave cuprieta. It's wood fermented with wild yeasts, double distilled in copper and pine to 51% ABV. Aromas on the nose for me here, a huge pink lemonade blast and melted brown sugar. Flavors for me on the palate, more pink lemonade, a smoky beef jerky, peppermint heat, floral and cigar finish, absolute score. I love that bottle so much, I got this one, but most important of all, I booked a trip to Michoacan. 
I absolutely needed to go there. I wanted to learn more about these mezcals and the great producers, and it was exceptional. I'd been to Oaxaca before that, but the Michoacan mezcal scene definitely has its own identity. When I was there, I went to the La Luna Viñata, spent the whole day there. The owner, Salvador Chavez, set the whole day up for me, but when I got there, the guy running the show that day was Adrian Galagos. And Maestro Adrian showed me so much. The agave fields, they uncovered an orno and there was piping hot agave that we got to bite into, delicious. And they even let me help out with the distillation. The whole experience was just amazing. I tried all their mezcals. I brought a bunch back home with me, but when it came to testing this one there, I just said, boys, just ring me up for a whole liter. I already know what awesomeness I'm in for. So yeah, this at number one, very special to me. It piqued my curiosity in terms of Michoacan mezcals and then catapulted me over there. And I got to see one of the best brands and some of the best people, hands down. All right, quick recap of the top five. We have Malbien Madraquish Puntas. Number four, the Megue Melate Tequilana. Number three, Vago Mexicano by Aquilino Garcia. And number two, the Vago Elote by Temo and Mateo Garcia. And number one, La Luna Chino. I gave all of these five stars on Mezcal Reviews, but the bigger driver is why each one of these made my top five list. All right, that's it for today. If you have a special Mezcal for 2021, leave a comment below. I love hearing people's opinions on this. If you're getting value out of this, subscribe and Time to sign off with a salute by number one, La Luna Chino. Can't go wrong with this guy here. So once again, thanks for showing up. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank you very much. Salud.